Imagine laying on a hammock, getting some sun, eating a bucket of mushrooms. You're getting vitamin D3 from the sun and vitamin D2 from mushrooms. It's exactly what you want to do. There's a big difference between vitamin D3 and vitamin D2, and we're going to break it down. Vitamin D2, you're getting from yeast, you're getting from mushrooms, you're getting from fungi, right? Vitamin D3, we're getting from the sun. Now, ultimately, they're both going to the same place and they're doing a lot of the same things, but understanding the biochemical reaction within the body and understanding even the hydroxy groups, which sounds complicated, will help us know where we want to get our vitamin D from. It really sheds some light on the whole D2, D3 thing. Because a lot of people in the plant-based community will argue that vitamin D2 is just as good as vitamin D3 from like fish, eggs, things like that. When in reality, it's not quite that simple. Vitamin D2 may do different things within the body that D3 does but they both go to the same place. So anyway, let's break it down. Hey, after this video, I want you to check out Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store, tremendous sponsor of this channel. They have been for four or five years now, and there is a link down below that'll save you 25% off your first grocery order with them. Plus, you'll get a free gift if you use that link. So this way you can get whatever food category you're interested in. If you're interested in keto, paleo, vegan, whatever, you just sort by that and pick whatever kind of foods you wanna get, and they get delivered to your doorstep. It is hands down, the easiest way to shop for groceries. So check them out. That link is down below in the description. You can check them out after this video. So vitamin D3 and vitamin D2 have very similar structures. The only real difference with D2 is a double bond and the methyl group that's attached to it. So what that means is like how it binds to different transport proteins is slightly different, okay? But really, they're very, very similar. There's very subtle differences in how they're metabolized and utilized within the body. When it comes down to utilization, which we'll cover in a little bit more detail, they really are going to the same place, right? Vitamin D3 and vitamin D2 ultimately end up in the same hormonally active pool. So it's incorrect to say that one is better than the other in terms of mechanism of action, but it's all about potency, deliverability. Let's talk about that. So let's talk about how we get vitamin D3 for a second. When we go out in the sun, we have something near our skin called pro-vitamin D. Pro-vitamin D, just like the name implies, it's ready to go. It's a precursor pro-vitamin D. It receives UVB light from the sun, and that creates what's called pre-vitamin D. Okay, pre-vitamin D ultimately converts into usable vitamin D3. Well, D2 is different, but not much. You see, D2 does the exact same thing, except it's happening in yeast and fungi, okay? So in fungi, it's taking the UVB light and it's combining that with a pro-vitamin D2, turning it into a pre-vitamin D2, and then turning it into a vitamin D2. Like, no real difference, except different mechanisms and where it's going. So the same photon absorption is occurring. It's just happening in ergosterol in a fungus versus happening in the human body. Anyway, let's continue. Let's talk about how they differ in the body though. The International Journal of Molecular Sciences published something interesting that kind of showed how this worked. Okay, so vitamin D2 and D3 are very similar once they are in the body. They both go to the liver first. Okay, so D2 and D3 are both gonna to go to the liver first and they get acted upon by an enzyme called cytochrome P450, okay? Now the cytochrome P450 comes in, it breaks them down into a different form. It breaks them down into 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 and 25 hydroxy vitamin D2. At this point, they get further broken down by enzymes and get further broken down by the kidneys. So now at this point, vitamin D3 and vitamin D2 are so unbelievably similar that even researchers and scientists can barely tell the difference. Okay, so the vitamin D2 that we perhaps got from eating like mushrooms or consuming yeast or anything like that, and the vitamin D3 that we got from the sun or the eggs and the fish are so similar we can hardly tell the difference. So let's talk about potency for a second. The Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism found that they're absorbed at very similar rates. However, vitamin D2 has about one third the potency of vitamin D3. So they're absorbed at almost the same rate. So it's nothing to do with absorption. It's about potency. So we're seeing that vitamin D3 is much more potent. Well, what's going on? Well, here's where we insert the vitamin D transport protein, okay? The binding protein. This is what's transporting it around. It's called DBP, D binding protein. So it carries it around. Well, 
all classifications of vitamin D metabolites will eventually ride on this transport, eventually ride on this vitamin D binding protein. But some metabolites in some forms have a stronger affinity for it. Turns out that vitamin D2 does not like to bind to this vitamin D binding protein very well. Okay, this means that vitamin D doesn't circulate nearly as well. So that journal of clinical endocrinology metabolism study that I mentioned just a second ago, well, they found that after three days with vitamin D2, the circulating levels dropped, whereas vitamin D3, the levels continued to stabilize quite a bit before they dropped. So definitely makes some sense, right? It's this binding protein that vitamin D2 doesn't like to bind to. But the funny thing is, they're still going to the same place. Vitamin D2 just refuses to get on the dang bus. Okay, so we end up having to consume a bunch more to fill up our pool. Does it mean that you can't get vitamin D that you can use? from a mushroom? No, you can, but you'd have to consume copious amounts. Okay, so anyhow, let's continue. Additionally, because of the way that the methyl groups are with vitamin D2, it can be hydroxylated easier, which means that it can get broken down and deactivated and excreted easier. Okay, vitamin D3 can also get deactivated, but because D2 gets hydroxylated and deactivated so much easier, that's the first line of defense. The body always goes for efficiency. Like why would it want to break down vitamin D3 when it's just as easy for it to break down vitamin D2 and go through hydroxylation, right? So that deactivation of D2 is another reason why we have to consume so much of it to ultimately get an effect. But we're now just kind of discovering that vitamin D2, it's so similar to D3, it still goes to the same pool, but still different. So perhaps there are different receptor sites and perhaps there are different mechanisms of vitamin D2 that we don't know about. We obviously know a lot of the research in mushrooms is becoming fascinating, so maybe there's something that we should be looking at in the world of vitamin D2. Now you can supplement with either one, but if they're both going to the same hormonally active vitamin D pool, why would you supplement vitamin D2 when you'd have to take copious amounts of it to get the same effect as you would from vitamin D3. So until we know the exact particular independent effects that vitamin D2 may have independently of D3, I think it's safe to say lean into the vitamin D3 much more. But it's certainly not hurting you and it's not gonna do anything wrong to try to get more supplemental vitamin D from mushrooms. It's incorrect to assume that they are different forms of vitamin D in terms of how they affect our body. They both go to the same pool and affect our cells positively. So eating a bunch of mushrooms to support your vitamin D levels is not some wingnut wacko plant-based thing. It's a real thing. You can absolutely do it. Vitamin D3 might be more effective, but they're still in the same category. It's not, it's not bad because it's D2. D2 is still ultimately vitamin D. And it's still, we just have so many different conversion processes that we have to think about what is happening in terms of the enzymes, the cytochrome P450, and that whole process. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.